Hello there, Sev here from Motorhome Dealer Group and welcome to this video guide on the Sargent EC160 power supply unit. In this video guide I'm going to explain uh, the features of the control panel, how to operate it, so that uh, hopefully by the end of the video you feel comfortable using this control panel in your leisure vehicle. We're not going to be covering any troubleshooting or problem solving if you are experiencing issues related to your control panel in your vehicle then i suggest you uh, consult your instruction manuals or seek the help of a technical professional this video really is just a quick start guide to get you up and running using this control panel in our and power supply unit in your vehicle so without any further ado let's just get started so first of all, let's talk about the features of this power supply unit. Um, essentially, what this power supply unit is going to do is act as your electrical one-stop shop. <laughs> essentially, uh, we have uh, the mains consumer unit in here. We have the 12 volt fuse box in here, as well as the battery charger, and then also a control panel to control the main functions uh, or power to your, the main functions of your leisure vehicle. So it does all of these jobs in one. Now, uh, it can be a little bit confusing at first when you just look at this uh, unit, but it is actually straightforward once you sort of start to break things down. So firstly, we have uh, essentially the top half of the unit here is dedicated towards the 12 volt system. And then everything below that on the bottom half is for the mains electric. In the top half here, if I lift up this little window, we have the 12 volt habitation fuses. And as you can see there, they are actually labeled as well. Uh, some units may not have them labeled. They may be numbered or they may be blank. This particular unit, as you can see, does have each fuse position labeled. And then we have the uh, control panel functions, essentially, which I'll come on to in a minute. We have a uh, display here that's going to show us the battery voltage. And at the bottom half here, we come to the mains electric area where in this window we have the RCD and the MCB. So your mains electrical trip switches just here. We have a reverse polarity warning light that will illuminate if you have a polarity issue with your mains electric hookup lead or source. And then we have an on off switch for the battery charger itself. So that's the layout of the panel. Now let's talk about how to actually use it. Using this control panel is, is very, very simple. What we have first of all is we have a series of buttons as you can see. This one here is a simple two position switch. This is going to turn on or off this display when the panel is powered up. At night time, this could be quite bright. So you can turn it off, uh, the panel is still on, uh, but it's not going to uh, keep you awake at night with a bright light. Next up, we have quite an important control here. This is the battery selector. It's a three position switch with off being in the middle. If we click up, we are selecting the leisure battery and down we are selecting the vehicle battery, as you can see labeled. Um, then we have over here the lights or auxiliary. So typically this is going to be wired to your vehicle lighting circuit, but it could be wired to something else, hence the auxiliary label there. And then we have the water pump on off switch here as well. So firstly, let's select a battery. So let's select the leisure battery. So I click up and as you can see, the display has now uh, come alive to show us a battery voltage. And because these switches are on, those particular systems are now live, as you can see when I turn the lights on there. If I flick off this switch, you can see the display uh, goes out there and powers down. That's just again, like I say, to avoid an annoying light at night. Now, if I flick off, everything turns off. Likewise, I can flick to the vehicle battery here. And as you can see, we get the voltage for that battery. And now the vehicle battery is connected. Now it's very important to make sure that if you do not have access to mains electric hookup, that you only select the vehicle battery position long enough for you to be able to get an indication of the battery voltage. Ideally, with the lighting and everything else turned off, you get a truer reading there. As you can see, when I turn the lights on, the voltage is going to drop a little bit to power the lights. So um, make sure everything is turned off and you can check the vehicle battery voltage. But once that's done, then switch to the leisure battery to actually power your vehicle because the leisure battery is what is designed to run your leisure vehicle, not the vehicle battery. However, uh, depending on how this has been wired, um, you can actually 
use this to direct the charge from the mains battery charger. So I'll explain how to use the battery charger and do that now. So down the bottom here, we have the battery charger isolation switch. And if I switch that on, we're currently selected on the leisure battery. Look at the voltage here is 11.6. I'll flick the battery charger on. And now we are reading a charging voltage of 13.5. Now, of course, we do need to be connected to mains electric hookup for this to work, of course. Um, but there we go. So as you can see, we have a charging voltage. Now I'm going to turn, turn the, um, the battery charger off. Let's go to the vehicle battery now. So now we're on the vehicle battery, which has a voltage of 12 at the moment. And if I turn the battery charger on, bang, this battery also goes up to 13.5 volts. So this particular panel is able to direct the charge to the selected battery. So whichever battery we have selected, that is going to not only be powering your leisure vehicle, but it's also going to be getting charged up at the same time by the mains power battery charger. So if you are connected to hook up, you can use this as a way of keeping both batteries nicely maintained. But if you do not have access to mains electric hookup and the charger is unavailable, please only select the vehicle battery to check the voltage. Otherwise, always power your vehicle on the leisure battery. So there is a little bit of a quirk with this type of control panel and power supply unit, and it's related to the battery uh, selection whilst either connected to mains electric or not. Now, at the moment, as you can see, we're selected on the leisure battery. We have the lights on so that you can clearly see we're on and also a voltage showing here. And then at the moment, I've just turned the battery charger off. This is just to simulate us not having access to mains electric. And in this configuration, if I now turn the battery selected to the zero position, so no battery is selected as expected and as shown previously in the video, everything powers down. We're not connected to a battery, so we have no power. But look what happens when I turn the battery charger on to simulate us having access to mains electric with the battery charger on, everything all of a sudden powers up, even though we're still in the off position here on the battery selector. Essentially, we are running directly from the output from the battery charger, which is not really ideal because, to be honest, if we have access to mains electric and the battery charger is on, well, really, we want to be recharging a battery. We don't want to be just wasting that access to a, to a mains charger. So the reason this is uh, not ideal and a little bit inconvenient is because in this position, as you can see, we, we need to have a battery selected here to charge either of those batteries. So in the off position, the battery charger isn't charging any of the batteries. I need to have either the leisure battery selected or the vehicle battery selected. Well, that's fine. But what if I want to power the vehicle down? and also charge at the same time. I can't select zero here because not only does that not select a battery, but it also clearly doesn't power down the system. And in order to power the system down, I can't turn off the battery charger because that's obviously what I want to use. So here is the quirk. When you want to charge uh, a battery, but not actually you know, have the vehicle powered up, what you're going to have to do is select the battery you want to charge up whilst connected to mains electric with the battery charger on, of course, and to power down the vehicle whilst charging, you're going to have to turn everything else off in the vehicle. So for all intents and purposes, it looks as though it's powered down and off, but it's currently not. The panel is on, it is selecting a battery, the charger is on and charging in the background, but you can just turn everything else off and it looks as though it is completely powered down. OK, I hope that makes sense. It's a bit of an odd one, um, but it's just a bit of a workaround you have to do when you want to use mains electricity and charge a battery, um, but actually have the vehicle powered down. Um, but of course, if you are off grid, so we have no access to mains electricity, when you're done with the vehicle, you can indeed just turn the power off uh, using the battery selector there. And that about wraps up the video. So just to recap, though, before we sign off, we have at the top here your 12 volt side of things, starting with your fuse box right there. We then have a series of controls to power the vehicle and uh, or power different aspects of the vehicle. So we have an on off for the voltage display. We have a three position battery selector here. We have your lights or spare uh, system power there. We have your water pump power just here below. That we then have your mains electric side of things, starting with the RCD and MCB mains electrical trip switches, a reverse polarity warning light, and then a battery charger on off switch just there. And uh, there we go, that about wraps it up. And that's how to use the Sargent EC160 power supply unit. 
I'm Sev, I hope you found this video useful and thank you very much for watching.